God bless you. Hello. I pray that you're having a great day. Bishop Wooden here. I'm excited about tonight's service, and I pray that things are going well with you as we are adjusting, but we're not being broken by the things that are taking place in our country, in our state, in our counties, towns, municipalities, uh, in our uh, uh, churches, in our churches, on the jobs. Uh, as you look around, we see things that we've never seen before uh, in, uh, in America. We see uh, businesses closed. We see schools shut down. We see people wearing masks. We see people social distancing. We see people behaving in ways that we never thought we would see. The closest that I remember uh, seeing anything uh, remotely, remotely resembling what we see today uh, were two things. Uh, the behavior uh, after 9-11, but mainly you saw uh, the behavior that mimics what we see uh, in our streets today. You saw it when you watched the news and they covered uh, New York, New York City and where the towers had fell. And you saw how the people were living there, but you saw it on the news. Uh, but uh, the closest thing that I uh, lived through was the 70s oil embargo uh, that took place. And there were these long line, long line of cars, people lined up uh, for miles of, of well, in long line, not for miles, but in long lines, people lined up to get gas. The, the fear was that we were going to run out of gas. There was actually no gas shortage. It was a oil embargo. And, um, uh, uh, I used to, as a, a little boy, uh, watch the cars, a young, a young, much younger man, watch the cars and determine, okay, that big car is going to be eliminated. That car is going to be eliminated because there's no gas, there's no oil, thus and so. And it was a very strange time. Well, fa fast forward that to today. Here we are uh, in the strangest of times, but I want to say in the strangest of times, the God of the Bible is God. He's alive and well, and I got something to tell you. He's in charge, and I'm excited about the word of the Lord that God has given me to share with you tonight. Now, I do know, I do know as a measure of housekeeping here that we've had uh, some problems, and if you have any problems, uh, getting us on Facebook, switch to, if you're able to do so, our YouTube channel, you will find us there. And we are giving people the word of the Lord. God spoke to me the first of the year. The Lord said, God's truth. Now, I had no idea that this coronavirus would, would have done or the reaction to it would have done what it has uh, to our nation and the world in just a few short months, some 70 uh, to 80 days, and everything has changed except one thing. God's truth. I'm glad that I seek the Lord and get my uh, themes uh, uh, annually from God. That way I don't have to worry about changing it or trying to adjust it. The truth is what's going to get us through this is God's truth. And I have something to say to you from God's truth uh, tonight. And also, I want you to uh, tune in tonight because we're going to give a very important announcement. We will be having uh, our communion this Easter Sunday. Yes, you and me, we will do communion together and we will give you instructions on how we're going to do that. My friends, doing this uh, Easter week leading up to the, the commemoration, the celebration of uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Good Friday is coming uh, tomorrow, and we're, we're going to think on how the Lord died. He died. He died for you, and he died for me. Yes, he hung his head and died. He died a miraculous death. He gave up the ghosts. And they buried him in a borrowed rich man's tomb. 
Thank God for Joseph of Arimathea. And we buried our Lord in his tomb. Thank God for Simon. Oh my, who carried the cross, man of color, carried the cross of Jesus Christ. My God today, but I'm glad that on the third day when Mary, Mary Magdalene and many others went, they didn't go to, they didn't go to view, view the uh, resurrected, the resurrection. They went to, uh, to anoint the body. They brought spices and all of those kinds of things. And when they got there, they found that the stone had been rolled away and there was an angel there. One writer said there were two dressed in white and they asked the question, why do you seek the living among the dead? Don't you remember what he told you that in three days he would rise again from the dead. And my friends, God, the father raised Jesus from the dead and Christ is alive and well right now. He's in charge. He is physically seated at the right hand of the father in heaven. But the, the God, the Holy Ghost is the active part of the Godhead in the earth today, carrying out the plans of God, the father and, and God, the son, Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. And when the time is right, when the time of the Gentiles be come in, all oh, this time will close with the culmination of the rapture of the church. And, and he's going to take us out of here, take us uh, to be with him. We're going to meet the Lord in the middle of the air. And, uh, and then so shall we ever be with the Lord. And my friends, then the, the total revealing of all of this that we're seeing today will come into play. You'll understand why the 5G. You'll understand why the, uh, uh, the viruses and, and the, 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 the response to it and what they were, uh, the, the closing of the churches and, and all, all of the the, the depopulationists who are just coming out now, people like Bill Gates and others, they're just coming out now and uh, uh, will tell you that, that they believe the problem with the world today is uh, too many people. And one of the things that moves me about these depopulationists, and I'm going too long, I'm going too long, but I got to share this with you. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. One of the things that moved me about these, these people who, who feel that uh, uh, there are just too many people on earth. There are just too many people. And, uh, and by the way, you know, Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood were one, she's one of the greatest depopulationists who ever lived. Planned Parenthood is a depopulationist uh, uh, organization and they specialize with their Democrat backers in depopulating the black community. When are we going to wake up? And realize that nothing is worth anything if you don't get a chance to be born. But let me go back to my point here. These depopulationists who believe that the problem with the earth is that there are too many people. Earth, uh, we're, we're 8 billion, 6 billion people or so on the earth or however many. And they believe that there's just going to be too many people. And so the depopulationists, uh, when they talk about downsizing and slowing the birth rate and getting rid of people, they never include themselves. Not before if you're going to depopulate and if you just if you just if you're just obsessed with it. How about you go? <laughs> and let the rest of us live. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. But you know what? These elites, they're not planning to go anywhere. They're not planning for their children, nor their grandchildren, nor their, uh, their, their posterity to be affected at all. They are planning for you and for me, we little people, to be exterminated. But they keep running into a roadblock. And that roadblock is the God of the Bible. And God has a plan and God's going to take care of his people. God's going to take care of his church. God's going to keep us. And I want to show you, my friends, where the Lord, the Lord will build a wall of salvation. God will place deliverance all around you. 
Uh, listen, all is not lost. Don't you lose your cool. Don't you fall apart during this time. I've heard reports of people who have taken their own life. You better not be in that number. You better not be in that number. Why would you be in that number? You better not be afraid. You better not fall apart. You better not lose your mind. Don't you crack. Praise the Lord. Don't get depressed. Why would you do that? When the Lord is with us and the God of the Bible is on our side. Now, I've got some things that I want to show you tonight. Matter of fact, I have the Bible open to the page that I'm going to preach from, but you can't see it. <laughs> you got to wait. Hey, I, I wanted to close this with inviting you to meet me here. And uh, it just dawned on me that, that, you, that you can't meet me in person. But you can meet me uh, via these various ministry outlets. Uh, join us on Facebook. Join us on our YouTube channel. Just join us and, uh, and, and keep us in your prayers. And, uh, and saints, I want you to stay safe. I want you to be wise. Uh, well, I want you to, uh, to continue to, to uh, put, in, put in place all of the best practices and, uh, and watch the God of the Bible uh, see us through this. They've already lowered the projections. They've already lowered them from two point some odd million people dying if we would do nothing, which that was never on the table, to 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 uh, eighty seven thousand. Now it's down to sixty thousand. I believe. Thank God for all of the other things, the social distancing. The medical breakthroughs and uh, the wearing of the masks and all the other stuff. But you know what I believe is happening, saints? I believe that the God of grace, the God of mercy, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is once again showing us mercy. He's showing us mercy. And uh, I think that our response to his mercy should be to praise him, to love him, and commit to living for him. Commit to being righteous and godly. Hallelujah. Commit to being representatives of the God of the Bible in this present world. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Yeah, we're going to study the Bible together. We'll see you tonight.